I think essential to any revolution, whether it's the beginning, the middle, or the end, is people and people's involvement and feet on the ground and the willingness of people to stand up to regimes, to dictators, and to say, I count and I will not be tyrannized anymore. Mm -hmm. They can use social media as a tool to help them say that. They can use social media as a tool to help them connect with others who are saying that. But at the end of the day, the most essential ingredient to our revolution is people and people's involvement in those revolutions in the real world. I think Twitter in the Egyptian case was much more a tool that connected them to the outside world. So it was definitely more about communication than uh, organization inside because Twitter was one of the ways that they organized but I think there were many other ways that were more effective on the ground in Egypt. So SMS was probably much more effective than Twitter because more people have mobile phones and abil the ability to text each other than to go on Twitter. Not everybody in Egypt has a Twitter account, not everybody in Egypt has an internet connection. So I think for some people Twitter could have helped con in with connections. But I think Twitter overall, when we step back now and look at the role it played during the revolution, was much more a way for people to communicate with the outside world. And it basically gave the outside world a front row seat to the Egyptian revolution. The point I make about Mubarak shutting down the internet is to show that the internet wasn't vital to the revolution. The internet or social media and, and people's ability to use it online was just one of the many tools they used to bring themselves out on the street, to galvanize and to inspire other Egyptians to join in. And the funny thing about shutting down the internet is that it by no means did it end the revolution. If anything, it increased numbers on the street because a lot of people who were at home getting information from the internet then started to go out on the street and took part in the revolution. I think the revolution or getting, because the revolution in Egypt for me continues. The revolution is not over, so I never speak about it in the past tense, or I try not to speak about it in the past tense. Mm -hmm. The revolution continues, but toppling Mubarak would have happened anyway, whether he had shut down the internet or not, because I think that the momentum was built day, by, day in, day out, and there were enough cities involved in the Egyptian revolution and enough people involved. I think between 15 million to 20 million people is estimated. So it would have happened anyway. Perhaps it happened faster because he shut it down. We'll never know. But in 18 days, we forced him to step down. In, in a sense, it could have, because not everybody has access to social media, not everybody is able to use it, not everybody is able to read it or access it. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, I gave the example in my talk, the, the way that cassette tapes were tools that Ayatollah Khomeini used to, to send his message to Tehran before he returned from exile in Paris to take part in the Iranian revolution, the way that the fax machine was used during Tiananmen Square, the way the printing press was used during the Christian Reformation. I mean, these are all tools that helped something very big happen. But we never call any of those things, you know, the printing press reformation or the cassette tape revolution or the fax machine revolution. At the end of the day, your message has to reach people and people have to go out on the streets and say, this is the change that we want. This is basically kind of revolution 101. If Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and Google and Yahoo and all of those corporations and the men and women who run them cared about revolutions. I think they would listen more to activists who impress upon them or who are trying to impress upon them the various ways that activists in the ground, often in very dangerous, uh, very dangerous areas and countries where their lives are threatened, are trying to use them anonymously and are trying to use them to highlight police brutality. Mm -hmm. Because there, there have been cases, for example, in um, Wa'il Abbas, an activist in Egypt, his YouTube account was shut down because it was full of police tapes showing police brutality. Mm -hmm. And Yahoo said, you're violating our rules because of violent content. Right. But this wasn't violent content for the sake of violent content. This wasn't some you know, horror movie. This was videos or tapes highlighting police, exposing police brutality. And also on Facebook, the Facebook page, We Are All Khalid Said, which was one of the catalysts on the road to the revolution in Egypt, it was threatened with being shut down too because the man who started it, we now know he's Wa'il Ghunim, who was a Google executive. Back then, he opened the page or he launched the page anonymously and Facebook threatened to shut it because you can't have pages anonymously. So I think all these executives who don't care about revolution, they care about their corporations and making money, have to understand that people are using their tools 
people are using Facebook and Google and Yahoo to help them in, in very restrictive areas. And I think they should listen more to activists about the ways that, you know, just out of corporate social responsibility, they can actually help these activists and help save lives in some instances.